Hey guys, it's Ethan aka Quantum Gaming here bringing you some fresh footage straight from Drop Zone on the Solus map in the Star Wars Battlefront beta. I've been playing this since it launched on Thursday, I think it's a fantastic game. Well, from what I've seen so far and played so far, I've only got about 8 or 9 hours into it. And I would highly recommend playing it if I were in your position. It's an open beta on both console, well, both current German consoles and the PS4. Um, so if you've got the multiplayer subscriptions for the consoles, or you've got a PC, yeah, of course uh, it's all free in PC, but you'll need the Origin, EA Origin game client to download it on PC, I would highly recommend jumping straight in and giving it a go if you're a fan of Star Wars shooters or the Battlefront series, any of those. Or even if you're just curious, I would still recommend playing it. Um, one of the reasons I'm bringing you drop some footage is because I want to show you a particularly effective combination of hand cards as they're called in this game, they're basically your perks and equipment. You can see in the bottom right corner there, there's three cards, you have three card slots. Two equipment slots, one on three in this case, I'm playing on PC, so those are my key buttons, as well as just slot numbers, and then an ability slot in slot two. Now the equipment I have selected is the jetpack and the thermal detonator, and the like ability slot I've chosen is the bubble shield, which if you've seen any of the Star Wars films, well, the prequel tr trilogy is where you're going to have seen it, is the Droidica shield, that's what the in-game explanation is, an adapted version of the Droidica shield, adapted by the Empire. Um, it's quite useful, all of these qualities are quite useful now, I'm going to give you a quick well down of all three that I know of. Um, ion shield, essentially powers up your weapons for a limited time against vehicles and gives your blaster bolts a blue colour instead of red. You have personal shield, um, bubble shield essentially, which um, I use. It basically gives you uh, an invincible shield for a short period of time. However, the one thing you'll have to watch out for is that you cannot shoot when enveloped in the shield. The enemy cannot shoot you, obviously, whenever you're enveloped in the shield. But however, you can and can be melee killed. So you can sort of, especially if they're unsuspecting, you can activate the bubble shield and charge straight up to them and start meleeing them and what I would recommend is watching out in case the shield dies and then you sort of get shot by three or four enemies. One thing I will say is it's very useful on the Hoth map whenever you're attacking Echo Base, the um, base, the rebel base inside the mountains, because it'll let you get through those corridors, get inside them and close with the enemy instead of getting shot because the corridors and Hoth are an absolute death trap. I will bring you some Hoth gameplay later on. I have plenty of footage already. I want to get some more before I start editing it together because I really want to get my opinions across. I want to have sort of a long video to really get a feel for how the game looks. I want to have hero footage. I've got some decent arrow footage already from um, flying a TIE Interceptor. Um, I have a little bit of hero footage but it's not very good and I want some vehicle footage as well. The ATST and ATAT before I like bring that towards you. But I think Walker Assault is probably my preferred game mode, however I've been having a lot easier time getting matchmaking in Drop Zone. The matchmaking in Walker Assault seems to kick people quite a lot at the moment, so that's the only reason I brought this video. Now, if you just watch very carefully there, you'll, well, you didn't really have to watch carefully, you'll see that I use the jetpack and the thermal detonators to get one. The jetpack and the thermal detonators are a deadly combo, because you can get sort of an aerial vantage point and chuck a grenade down on the enemy. They won't really see it coming because it's dropping like out of the sky as opposed to like being thrown towards them so they won't notice it until it's already landed and that means that they're probably going to get in the blast radius and kill You'll also see that I got quite a few kills there because what I've done is I jumped in behind the enemy and I flanked them and flanking is really important in this game because like a lot of people are playing this sort of like a first person shooter they're playing in FPS mode what I've started doing is I've started playing in third person mode because if you play a lot of Grand Theft Auto you'll notice that the third person well you'll sort of have to either have, have mods on the PC in previous games or have the current gen console version or PC version of GTA 5 in order to realise this, but first person mode really has a detrimental impact on your field of view and your situational awareness. And the third person mode gives you a lot wider field of view and a lot more situational awareness and granted I'd still die there of course, but you'll see things a lot easier. And you'll see things that you wouldn't otherwise have seen. If you're in first person mode and you're in behind cover, you're sort of going to be blinded. Um, you're not going to be able to see anything. Whereas if you're in third person mode, you'll still be able to see the world around you, the world above that um, cover, above the edge of the trench if you're on Hoth, or around the corners here. Like, for example, I wouldn't be able to see this guy if I was in first person mode because I still would have been staring at rocks. However, the third person mode really allowed me to do that and then jump back and jetpack grenade again. Fantastic combo. 
jetpack also really gets you out of the trouble. Now the one thing is you have to be sparing with your use assembly because the game forces you to be. If you look at the bottom right corner of the moment, the, the jetpack is still recharging. Now, you have unlimited use of each of these um, cards for each life and each match. Except for the central card, your equipment cards, you can use as many times as you want. They just have a recharge time. You'll see there the jetpack is recharging again. Jetpack is worth 10, I think 10 seconds is the recharge time for the jetpack, with 7 seconds for the thermal detonator. So, don't just keep spamming them. Don't be afraid to use grenades lots. Like, don't be thinking you have to keep them like you would in other first person shooters. You don't. But, at the same time, don't spam them, otherwise, you might find that you don't have like your jetpack to get out of a sticky situation where you need it, or a thermal detonator available to clear that corridor that's full with enemies whenever you have the chance. However, the central slots, ability slots, those are limited use in the case of the ion shot and the bubble shield. Now, I didn't mention earlier the third ability because A, I haven't used it, and B, is it different? I'll go through the first two, the ion shot and the bubble shield first. They have limited uses. Um, I've already explained sort of their function, but you'll see in the bottom right corner of the card, they there's a number and that indicates how many uses of those you have left. Now, throughout the map, you see a couple of ion bubble shield symbols, and what those do is they give you a new charge. You can also buy new charges with credits in the customization menu, however, to be honest, you shouldn't be using them that much that you can refill them with like charges situated on the map. In the case of the sharpshooter ability, however, it's more a passive ability that keeps going, and what that does is it reduces the cooldown time of your other two equipment abilities for every headshot you get. Now, I haven't really used it because I don't think it would be as really important to me, but if you're using, say, the cycle rifle especially, because it's basically a sniper rifle with a 7 second re um, recharge time, and one th reason I would recommend using them with that is because it's like any Call of Duty sniper or any Battlefield sniper. It's 90 damage out of 100 to the body, so if they take damage already, a psycho rifle is a really good way to like get that kill for yourself. But, otherwise, if they're full health, it's going to take a headshot to kill them. So, if you're getting the headshots with that, if you're good with the sniper rifle, I would recommend probably Sharpshooter. Um, it's in the name, really. It's made to go with the psycho rifle. It's a world of interesting amount of time, especially if you're sort of in that like ideal, I don't want to say camping, but it will be camping sort of for a sniping position. It will let you keep churning out those um, headshots, the kills that will support your team and allow them to take the objective. Now, in the case of drops on the objective or drop pods, you can see dotted around the map, you basically have to activate the capture and then hold them until the capture is complete. Um, if the enemy team activates their capture, then that will completely reset all of your progress and begin their progress. Um, usually, that means that it technically could go on almost definitely until the timer runs out, but in practice, usually one side will get it and lock it down and stop the enemy from capturing like I just did there now. Uh, until they win in this case, I think we won't end up winning this match on this drop pod 5-1, but you can have very close one matches, yep, there you will win. Um, now, that's this little bit of gameplay where you can see I did middlingly well in terms of points because I didn't get any of the captures on for the drop pods. Oh, my kill death ratio was fairly decent, which I know a lot of you I don't care about too much, but a lot of you will care about. And that's one of the reasons I really advocate this combination of equipment on this particular map. It also works in Hoth, but Cycle Rifle is more viable in Hoth because there's a lot more long sight lines. Um, if you like the video, give us a like, um, drop us a comment where you're pinging, subscribe if you want, um, and I'll bring you more Battlefront footage, uh, Quantum